Hello. We're going to start with this image of Earth, one that I'm sure you've seen, but what I want you to think about is how unbelievable it is that we can have an image like this, how privileged we are as a species, as humanity, to be able to go to space through technology, turn around and look at our whole planet. And this is one snapshot of Earth, but the thing you should remember too is that this Earth has been changing for five billion years. It changes, the, the, earth, the face of the Earth changes, and you know that, we have earthquakes and volcanoes and you're very familiar with those. And the climate changes, five billion years, so one snapshot constantly changing, tomorrow will never be like it is today. The thing I worry about is that that image of Earth makes us feel like we understand it all. We take it for granted. We've seen the Earth before. But from where I work, this is the way we look at the Earth. That's the Pacific Ocean. And when you look at it like this, you realize that the planet is mostly blue. It's covered with water, oceans. 70% of the planet covered with oceans. Average depth a little bit more than two miles, so that's an awful lot of water. And what I'd like you to remember today is that most of it is unexplored. We've only explored about 5%, maybe 6% of that water. So most of the planet water, 70% or so, we've only explored a few percent of that, so basically this planet is still unexplored. You know, when we take the water away, uh, that we start to look at the seafloor, it's an amazing place. Even in that few percent, we find the world's greatest mountains, the world's greatest mountain range, the mid-ocean ridge. You see it up there as a brown line that goes through all the oceans. And, and on that mountain ridge, there's thousands of mountain peaks that are higher than Popo, many times, you know, a couple times, a thousand meters higher. It's amazing. We find mountains, we find rivers, we find, yes, rivers in the ocean, we call them currents, but they're at the surface and at depth. We find valleys, thousands of valleys that are deeper than any val valleys we have on land. We even find the, the world's tallest waterfall beneath the sea, beneath the sea in that 5%. So we're finding all of these things that we never expected before in, in that blue ocean. You know, part of the reason is that it's so deep that we have to have technology to get there. Just like space, we have to have technology to go deep in the ocean. And here I show a research vessel, the one we have where I come from in Woods Hole. It's called Elvin. Atlantis and the submarine that you see here is called Elvin. It holds three people in that submarine. It's been around for a long time, and I've been privileged to use it in my, when I was doing my research. So the three people getting ready to go over the side of the ship, all of them wondering the most important thing, should I have gone to the bathroom one more time? Because it's about 10 hours that you're inside that submarine. Over the ship you go, and no matter how many times you dive, when you get to this point, everything changes. You start hearing the sound of the ship. You start hearing the sounds of the sea, the sonar bouncing from the bottom back to the surface, the beautiful blue. And then divers check the sub to make sure that you're OK. Then you put a little bit of water in the ballast tank, and down you go. Two and a half hour trip to the bottom. In the beginning, mostly blue, then dark blue, deep blue, and then black for about two hours of blackness. And the thing about it was we thought for sure there'd be no life in the black. You have to have sunlight for life. But instead, when we stop and look in that world, we find incredible life. Uh, this particular animal, I call it a jellyfish. It's a siphonophore. This one's only eight inches long. It's got all sorts of working parts. It's got fishing lures, tentacles, many, many stomachs. Full grown, it can be over almost uh, 50 meters long. So it's an incredible animal, but you think about it that if you were trying to catch these animals in a net, they would fall apart, and you'd try to put them together in your laboratory. But instead, now with new technology, we can go there and see these animals where they live. That's an amazing step for us, but we were wrong about life inside that world. Well, we get to the bottom of the ocean, we find the record of humanity, you find sediments and things like that, but also you find big pieces of humanity like Titanic, and Titanic's amazing. And we went to Titanic just a little over a year ago. It's 100 years ago that Titanic sank. That's the bow of Titanic, where if you saw the movie, Jack was king of the world, the anchor. From Titanic, every single year, many, many ships sink to the bottom of the sea. About 14 big ships. And in the past, we would say we commit the ships and the souls for eternity to the deep. But now with our technology again, we can go there. And think about that, that's very profound, that with technology we now go visit a place that we call eternity. 
and we're learning a lot from studying Titanic, both about how to explore shipwrecks on the bottom, because some of them have hazardous cargo that we need to be able to get, but also about our own feelings, about our own integrity, about our own ethics, about going to a place that we called eternity. Even more surprising, now Titanic we expected, but there's things that we find on the bottom of the ocean that we never expected. With Titanic, what we're trying to do is build these virtual models. This is a painting by Ken Marshall, who does better than we can ever do with our video cameras. Ken painted this a long time ago, and we're trying to make this a real Titanic made out of real data. We're getting there so that anybody can explore Titanic. And if you can explore Titanic, you can explore and visit a coral reef or an underwater volcano or things like that. Well, anyway, Titanic we kind of knew existed. But there are things that are pretty amazing or shocking. You see the water there. This is a nighttime view lit up from the submarine. The thing about this image is that bit of water that you see on the bottom there with a beach around it is at the bottom of the ocean. There's lakes at the bottom of the sea, ponds, lakes, pools of water at the bottom of the sea. Here's a closer view of it. You actually see ripples in it, but where, from where you are, you're in a submarine looking out the windows at this body of water beneath the sea. We, on the top of that underwater mountain range, we find most of the volcanoes on Earth. And in fact, when you see Popo with the steam coming out the top like it does every day, that's what you're looking at here, except at mountains beneath the sea. And that water is incredibly toxic. It's full of hydrogen sulfide, the same way if you went to the top of Popo and smelled, it would be hydrogen sulfide. So we were sure that there'd be no life here because we're at the bottom of the ocean, there's no sunlight, there's poisonous chemicals coming out of the sea, the pressure is intense, and instead when we take the time to look, never predicted before, we not only find life at the bottom of the sea, but we find life that has a density and diversity that rivals the tropical rainforest. You're going to see it here in a moment that a pillar, a volcanic pillar that's full of life, and in one spot, 300 species, 290 of them never seen before. But the bottom of the ocean, where we said no life, we find abundant life. So we were absolutely wrong about the way we think life is on Earth. It's just amazing. And it take, takes exploration to find that out. Now, it's not all deep water where we're surprised. This is the work of my friend Roger Hanlon at the Marine Biological Laboratory, and he amazes me. He studies camouflage in animals, and they camouflage to hide from an animal like that barracuda. But in the next scene, you're going to see there's a huge octopus hiding in here. And I'll tell you that the octopus is large. It's got light skin, smooth skin. Here comes Roger. There he is. <laughs> Just amazing what we're finding animals can do. If we take the time to stop and watch, we find that animals, even in the deepest part or the shallowest part, where we thought we knew everything, we find out that we just don't know enough. And so let's go backwards. We're going to run this tape backwards in a moment and have a look at that octopus. And it's hard to believe that that octopus on the right, being light skin, smooth skin, can turn into that that algae and stuff on the left, but there it goes. It has to change its color, but it also changes his texture. Amazing. So when we go and look at, whenever we see a map of the Earth now like this, we think about so little of it's explored, but so much of it we're finding all these amazing things. Every time we go, we find something amazing. And, you know, why don't we explore it? The oceans, no matter where you live, impact your life. And here's a Sandy, the hurricane that just impacted the East Coast, 1,800 kilometers across. It's just amazing. That's an ocean event. Uh, the tsunami in Japan, uh, the deep water horizon. I draw the, the mystical monster, the crack in here. All these things, ocean, ocean, ocean. And in this case, an airliner that crashed in the middle of the ocean. There are many reasons why we have to go out to sea. But every time we go, and the, the thing that we, the message that comes across is that no matter where you live on this planet, the oceans impact your everyday life. The volcanoes, the, the lava that comes from Popo, and all the activity from the earthquakes is really because of the Pacific Ocean, okay? And, and, and if you're in the middle of China, the heartlands of Africa, New York, uh, Puebla, no matter where you are on the planet, the oceans do impact you. But by the same token, you impact the oceans. And when you look at a map like this from space, it always amazes me that you can't see any record of humanity. We're like a virus on the planet, but there's seven billion of us. And like a virus, we've managed through our activities, we change the chemistry of the ocean, we change the temperature of the ocean, and all of that spells not good news for any kind of life in the sea. If you have an aquarium, you know that if you change the temperature, if you change the, the chemistry, that you start to affect that life, and that's what we're doing. So we do need to start thinking differently. We do need to start acting different, differently. 
It's tough because we need to change our habits. It's not just oil, it's not just carbon dioxide, but it's things that run off of our city streets. It's herbicides, it's pesticides, it's nutrients that we put in our farmlands, it's what makes our golf courses green, it's what leaks out of your car. All of that stuff gets out into the ocean and it's deadly for the sea. Probably the most interesting thing I think of though is at nighttime, even though during the day you don't see humanity, at nighttime we light up. Okay, those are the lights of humanity on the ocean. These are images from WorldSat Incorporated, and they're amazing images. There's different kinds of lights. There's the white lights of the developed world. There's the blue lights, which are fishing fleets. There's red lights, the most bright things from space. Those are gas flares from oil exploration. But in Africa, if you have good eyesight, you'll see that Africa has golden lights. In Africa, up through the Middle East and into Asia, there's about a billion and a half people that are struggling to keep their life. Why? Because they don't have, one thing, fresh water, sanitary water. How could that be on an ocean planet? So one day we decided to take all the water off the earth. And this is what we found, is that if the earth was the size of a soccer ball, a football, that all the water on earth would fit into the size of a table tennis ball, a ping pong ball. If the earth is this size, all the water fits like this. Why, again, is that? Because I said that the oceans were 70% covering the earth. But if you think of just the Atlantic Ocean, it's 3,000 miles across, it's two miles deep. The oceans are extremely thin when you think about the whole planet. Water is very precious. It's one of the most important things we have to understand is what's happening to our water cycle. So I want to leave you with this. When you look at this image again, I want you to think that it's a planet, it's one snapshot of the Earth. It's five billion years old. It'll live, I hope, for another five billion years. And the thing about it is it's very dynamic. It changes in rhythms and cycles, just like music, rhythms and cycles and rhythms and cycles, a symphony of change, climate changes, the face of the earth changes. And there's a quote by Marcel Proust, the true voyage of exploration is not so much in seeking new landscapes, which we do, but in having new eyes. And in this case, technology has given us new eyes to explore the bottom of the sea. And our task now is to take that information from seeing the world for the first time, thinking about it differently, acting differently. Thank you very much. Bravo.